It's my pleasure to welcome Pablo Portilla of the ICMAT Madrid, who's visiting Northeastern University, who will speak to us today about tete a -tete graphs and ciphered manifolds. Oh, thank you for the introduction, David. Um, okay, so now I will talk to you about uh, something I'm de developing on my PhD thesis. So um, I'm gonna tell you about the relation of these two objects. Uh, the cipher manifolds are long known and not long known, and there's uh, plenty of uh, literature about them on, on mathematics. And the tete -tete graphs is something that um, the mathematician Norbert Acampo um, developed. I think at least there is a preprint of him in, from 2009 on the internet uh, uh, defining um, what the data graphs are. So the setting that we will concern today is uh, the following. So if we take, I'll use this letter for a surface, so it's a, an orientable um, compact surface with non m 2 boundary. Um, and let phi be uh, an automorphism of sigma. This is an automorphism. Such that um, the class of phi in, in the mapping class group of sigma, so this is, I'm considering the mapping class group where isotopies are allowed to rotate boundaries. So if, if this mapping class is periodic, meaning that it is of finite order in this group, that it is of, of finite order, uh, then um, this, this gives us um, cipher manifold. The cipher manifold will be the, the mapping, so this is a cipher manifold, and this is the, the mapping torus. Uh, this is an orientable cipher manifold, and, and the basis space of the cipher manifold is orientable as well. So this is a orientable, and with orientable base space. And it also gives us a horizontal surface of this cipher manifold. Uh, so you take the, every map in torus fibers of S, over S1, you take the perimage of any of the points of S1, and that gives you a, a surface that it's uh, homeomorphic to sigma, and it's embedded in, in sulfur manifold. And it is a horizontal surface because it is naturally transverse to the fibers of the sulfur manifold. And on the other hand, if you have a sulfur manifold, um, which is orientable and with the orientable basis space, and, and you pick a horizontal surface in that cipher manifold, then that gives you a, 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 a mapping and an homeomorphism of the surface in, into itself, which is periodic. So that homeomorphism would be, would be by, by following, you, you, take, you pick an orientation on the fibers of the cipher manifold, and you follow the flow of, uh, by, by that orientation, and, and and that will give you an automorphism of, of the surface, which is periodic. Mm -hmm. So um, we're, we're going to try to understand uh, this part of the situation with the uh, objects called mm -hmm. tete graphs. Um, and then we'll see how, how studying this uh, covered that situation there. OK, so okay, I'll, I'll start here. Um, so I'll use gamma. It's a, the topological realization of a graph. So this is, you can think of this as a one-dimensional CW complex. I just use the terminology graph because it is used in the literature uh, for these objects. But you can think of this as a, as a one-dimensional CW complex. Actually, this is, a, I'm not, this is not necessarily simple. Simple, and we ask that the, the valency of the vertices it's uh, greater than two. I'm so sorry, I don't remember what simple means. Simple means that uh, 
that you don't allow loops or more than one edge between two given vertices. So this, this allows that kind of thing to happen. Um, so I'll denote by P of gamma um, the set of vertices. And I'll denote by E of gamma. So this would be the zero skeleton of the complex. And, and I'll denote with this gamma minus the vertices. So these are its connected component here uh, is an edge. This will be all the edges. And I do the following construction. Now, now uh, to, to, to say a little bit what I'm doing now, it's um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some structure on, the, on gamma, which is called a ribbon structure. And that with that structure, we're going to be able to recover an orientable surface, the topology of an orientable surface with, with, with boundary. So um, for doing that, um, I denote for each, so for each V, the vertices, uh, I denote by N of V, uh, small, small meanings, uh, it doesn't contain any other vertices, a small closed neighborhood of B. And I denote by D of B, um, N of V minus V. This is sometimes called the set of darts. Set of darts adjacent to V. So, uh, ribbon graph structure. The ribbon graph structure gamma is a map. It's a, it's a cyclic orient. It's cyclic ordering of, of the set of connected components of, 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 of the darts for each V. So, um, Why darts? Because it looks like the feathers on the dart? Yeah, the this is terminology used in the literature. Yeah, I don't really know why, why it's uh, called a dart. Okay. I don't think you told me that before. Yeah. Um, so, so we're going to see how, how this, rec I'm, I'm going to do it for an example, and hopefully we'll be clear with that. Uh, we're going to see how this recovers information for, for constructing back uh, uh, an orientable surface with, with boundary. Um, so let's consider the following graph. So this is, you, you may think of this as an abstract graph. This, I just give a particular representation. It has two vertices and, and three edges. And, and I remind you that you have colored chalk. Uh, yeah, but no, I will not use okay. it yet. So, so n of v0 is this. And of v1 is this. And then d of v0 is just Presented to this to meaning that this edge corresponds to this one. The same here, here V1. So I can give a cyclic ordering of this set by assigning a, a, a number from 1 to, to, t, to 3 to each of these connected components. So, for example, I'm going to do this cyclic ordering here, and here I'm going to assign this other cyclic ordering 1, 2, and 3. And then from that information, I will, I will build here. A, Orientable surface with boundary. So, I'm going to give an embedding of, of each of these pieces into the plane. And that will be the following. Since D of B0 has three three connected components, I consider the third root of unity, and I send the dart label as one, to, so I send v0 to, 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 this, to, the, to the region, and I send the dart label as one to, to, to this segment, and I do the same form for the other two. So this is one, two, and three. And this is an embedding of, of this figure into so this v0, and identifying v0, which is image, but this embedding. And, and so, well, since, since 
The other piece has also three guards. It's, it looks exactly the same. And this is one, two, and three. So now um, we have to recover the incidence relation between this, this uh, to recover the original graph. Oh, sorry. First, first we do the following. Um, this is why it's called a ribbon graph because it is made of ribbons. So I consider a tubular neighborhood of, of this figure, like by considering the union of tubular neighborhoods of each of uh, the segments. So I get star-shaped pieces like this. Um, well, just to contain also these segments. And now I do this for every vertex. In this case, there are only two vertices. And then I, 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 re, I recover the incidence relation that we had here. Sorry for the cameraman. And, um, so this is it was the cyclic ordering. We see that um, the dart that is labeled as 1 here is connected to the dart that is labeled as 3 here. So in this place, we identify this segment with this segment by an orientation reversing homeomorphism. So that's, that's homeomorphic to doing this. I do that, I get an homeomorphic figure. And I do the same with the other edges. And I get this. And I got this. So clearly, this is an orientable surface with boundary. It's orientable by construction because the gluings preserve orientation at all, at all times uh, because they are orientation reversing on the boundaries. And so, if we want to find out which which surface it is, we just uh, observe that the, the graph is a strong deformation retard of, of the surface, so it has the same Euler characteristic, and it has two vertices at three edges, so the Euler characteristic is this, and then we want to find which surface it is, we just look at how many boundary components it has, and if you follow this line, you'll find out that it has only one boundary component, so G is one. Okay, I'm drawing this picture because we will use this on, on the rest of the talk, uh, so I'm going to draw this picture here. Um, so this is another representation of the same surface. And we can think of the graph as this. Okay, so um, every surface admits every surface or interval surface with boundary admit uh, one such graph, um, such that the thickening I call this the thickening of, of the graph. It's uh, the original surface that you you, you wanted. So okay, now um, I'm going to define a metric on that graph. So to me, a metric on the graph a metric gamma is a, it's a map that comes from the connected components of the edges to the positive real numbers. So given one of these maps, we may realize the original graph as a topological space by, by just uh, considering a copy of, of the Euclidean interval of, of the length that this map tells you, and then you quotient the, the, the ends of those intervals to recover the original graph by, by, the, by the incidence relation given by the combinatorial data of the, of the graph. So that way you get a, a metric realization of, of the original graph. You don't, you don't, since this is undirected, you just uh, don't care which, which vertex assigns to each end of, of the interval. Um, you just pick any and, and you consider that way a, a metric realization of the path. So, so given, given that, 
I'm going to define a um, special kind of path on the, on the graph. So uh, suppose the gamma is a metric real graph. So it's a real graph with a metric index in it. That is means and um, safe path, safe walk, sorry. It's also terminology by Norbert Campbell. Safe walk is a, it's a path that goes from 0 1 to gamma and satisfies the following two properties. So property 1, uh, this path is differentiable on E of gamma. Remember, E of gamma is the whole graph minus the vertices. And um, those points, it has uh, it uh, measured with the parameterization um, of the edges of the graph. Its length, uh, the length of the vector of the vector speed is one. Uh, so, per, so this is for all gamma t in E of gamma. So this means that it's parameterized by arc length. And the second property is that uh, if it um, if it gets to to a vertex and part of the vertex it was um, it belonged to okay let, let me sorry let me add some notation a little bit um, so once we were given the real graph structure the 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 set of dots of 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 v is the union of the union union of segments that I denote by by this meaning the i is meaning uh, given by the cyclic ordering so um, the cyclic ordering tells you that this goes before uh, the i plus one and the last one yeah. so. Uh, is that a V or a V? Check or, oh, that's a, a V. v. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. This is a V. Yep. So this is a, if this belongs to D V I, then uh, gamma T plus epsilon belongs to the V I plus one. So the mean, this means the next in the cyclic order. Um, so what, what what it looks like uh, a real uh, a safe walk here. Imagine that I give the metric that all these edges are length one. So these are all length one. One, one, and one. And I start this point. I initially pick. I think you need to make the point bigger. Thank I start you. this point, and uh, I pick one of the two uh, two tangent vectors to the to the graph. There are um, unit vectors, for example, this one, and then. So this is some distance delta. And then when I reach this, this vertex, since this is uh, the, the dart 3, I should turn to the right one. So that second property may be rephrased as saying that I always turn right at each, at each vertex. I make the, the sharpest possible right turn at, it, at each vertex. So I would turn right here. And since this is parameterized by arc length, I would just end here when this is the same distance as this one. Um, OK, so we say that, uh, that a metric real graph has the theta depth property. So definition um, gamma has the tet, tet Okay. If mm, well, we observe that given a, a point in the interior of an edge, there exist two safe walks that are starting at that point, uh, because a uh, safe walk is completely determined by, by its initial point and the and the unitary vector that you pick. So, if we know those two safe walks by gamma sub p and omega sub p, I say that this is. That type of property. So if, if the two safe walks are starting at, at a given point and, and the, at the same point. So this looks like a pretty strong condition. We'll see how strong it is. Um, so for example, this, this graph satisfies the data property. If I take consider the other safe walk that starts in, at this point, 
And here again, I turn right. And since I started um, delta from this vertex, I still have delta to go when I pass that vertex because this was one. So I satisfied that that's a particular for that point, but since this was not a particularly special point, you, you can believe that th this satisfies the other property, and it, and it does. Yeah? So it certainly depends on the metric. Yes, yes. Even though being a tete-a-tete -tete graph is a combinatorial thing. Yeah, I will, I will answer, I will happy, uh, happily answer that question. Okay. Yes. So if, if you remember that question at the end of the talk, I will happily answer that. Pablo. Yes. Why, uh, why haven't you said anything about faces? About what faces? faces. Yeah, so uh, if you're familiar with the notion of, uh, of the, the Sundam Fung, um, by Rothendick, the Sundam Fung, I don't know if you know that. I don't even know what you're saying. The Sundam Fung? <laughs> it's French. <laughs> My French is uh, 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 Oh yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I think what Rocky uh, is asking, is maybe sent to the child. Yeah, it's child's drawing. Oh, yeah, child's drawing. yeah. Child's drawing. So, so those are graphs that are embedded in a in a ribbon surface, and you ask that um, each of each of each of its boundary components bounds a disk. And those those are called faces. Um, so we don't. I don't use that because uh, to answer Rocky, this originally comes from the singularity point of view uh, setting. So, in, in, uh, the, uh, this is meant to to model Milner fibers. Or not in not in this particular thing that I'm telling you about today, but originally it is meant to model Milner fibers. And Milner fibers has naturally, well, you, the Milner fiber with boundary has a boundary. Uh, and and so this this is uh, why why I don't consider in capping off the boundary components of, of the surface. Thank you. <laughs> so, but yeah, it is also. I'm happy you answered that question because it has some relation with that as well. Um, so. So now, um, wh what are we doing? We 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 already have. Um, uh, uh, topological surface that satisfies certain, certain condition, and we are going to see how how this that property uh, help us build a periodic mapping class on the surface. So um, we do the following observation: uh, if you cut sigma along gamma, so when I say cut along gamma, it's the same operation that you use when you uh, prove the classification of topological surfaces. You really mean cut? If we had that made out of paper, yes. Yes, exactly. So, um, so for example, if, if you cut this surface, um, the surface and cut it along, along gamma gives you a, a cylinder. And in general, because, because of, by, by the construction, the, the graph is a strong deformation regard of the surface, it gives you as many cylinders as boundary components had the original surface. So this is a disjunct union of cylinders that I will denote this. So this is runs along some set of indices. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a, ma a mapping class in this set of cylinders such that uh, if I denote by G the gluing map, back to sigma, is compatible with the gluing, meaning that if two points here glue to the same point, the rematch but the diffeomorphism uh, also maps to the same point. So for defining this map, I'm going to define a map in its cylinder the following way. Sorry, I lost it. What's the indexing set, capital I? Yeah, um, this is the, this is some index set, final index set, and it's, it's the same as the, the amount of boundary components that the original surface has. Right. So, okay. yes. Yeah, I was. So, um, we're going to do it the following way. We take um, 
the universal covet of its cylinder. I did this construction. This is pi. And this, let it know by g tilde the restriction of g to, to this cylinder. Um, and we use the same colors as I used there. So, oh, sorry. So, this is the universal color there. Meaning uh, these lines are meant to mean that each goes. Uh, they are the pretty much four line in, in the in the cylinder here. And I will define the following I think any diffeomorphism that does the following thing. So uh, this this sorry. Um, this has a metric uh, that we put in originally, and that induces a metric on each cylinder. So this has a metric, and this also has a metric induced. So I consider this direction, meaning this is the opposite direction of, of this boundary, seen as the boundary of this uh, surface, as, as in R2. And I take uh, 1, suppose that this is 1, length 1. And I take any any uh, curve that goes from this point to, to this point, and I consider the image of this curve here. It'll be something like this. And I take any any homeomorphism that does that sends this curve to this other curve. And in the mapping class group where I where I set up is not allowed to rotate boundaries, but different morphisms may, may rotate. Uh, may, may move the boundaries. Uh, this is a, this defines a mapping class. So I take uh, any any representative of this, that homomorphism, um, and that defines a homomorphism for each of the cylinders. So now I want to 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 show you how this homomorphism defines a, is actually compatible with the gluein, and that's going to be because of the theta theta property. And um, so. Let's do the following observation. Mm. Near each point, this is the situation. So you have a, this is one edge of the graph. These are the boundaries that are cut to, to that edge. And after the glue, after the after cutting, we have this. So we had a point here, P. It has always two parameters, p0 and p1. And here, we saw that it has, that it had two safe walks when it starts in its direction. So, the safe walk that starts in this direction can be lifted to this, to this boundary component. So, actually, right, the observation is that if we take here, we call gamma p0 map that parameterizes uh, this, this segment by arc length from this point to this point with, con with constant spin speed uh, 1, the composition um, gamma p0 with pi and with g tilde is exactly one of the two shape walks of, of p. And the same happens with this safe walk on the other cylinder to, to, to where it lives. So why, why does it lift here? Uh, this is because of the property of the safe walks uh, that making a right turn at each vertex. So at some point here, I'm going to reach the vertex. And when I reach that vertex, it's going to have many edges there. But I know that I make it the right turn possible. So I never live in this, this same boundary component. So that's why this path lifts, uh, lifts to, the, to that cylinder. And the other one lifts to the cylinder uh, of which this boundary component is part of in, the, in sigma cutted along gamma. So since these two safe walks end at the same point, it means that this is 
I can actually, this is compatible with the gluing. So how, how general is this? And I'm going to tell you now how general it is. I'm just going to try to keep those pictures there. Um, I'm going to clean this part. So, well, let, let me def define a number for you. So the following thing is, is true. Um, if you have a, an automorphism of a surface, which satisfies that it is um, it's, it's mapping class in the mapping class group, it is um, periodic. And restricted to the boundary is the identity. Um, and it leaves this uh, maybe it leaves some some retract of the surface invariant. Then uh, you can assign to it some some numbers, which I denote by rod of. So okay, sorry. Let, let me let me make an, uh, uh, um, a remark before that. So this, the way I define it, this defines mapping class. Um, here, this defines mapping class in the relative mapping class group. That is the mapping class group where all morphisms are the identity on the boundary, and an isotopy is fixed the action on the boundary. And of course, there is a map here that forgets about that. So we have two two mapping classes. I will denote. The mapping class here by gamma star and the mapping class here by phi gamma. And if if a, if a mapping class here satisfies that it is periodic here, um, and and it leaves some some actually actually we can drop this condition but uh, for for the sake of the definition we suppose that it leaves some 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 graph invariant then it has associated some numbers, um, which are the following numbers, where uh, this is just one boundary component, and and they are defined as follows they are rational numbers, and and they are defined as uh, you take. Um, so I, I will I, to, to define it properly. We will have to take a lot of uh, orientation conventions. So I will do it in, in an example here. So suppose that uh, the automorphism in this cylinder does the following thing. So we count the intersection number of this retraction interval with its image by the automorphism, and and, and if if it's in in the direction depicted on the picture, so in this direction, meaning that this is the opposite direction of this as seen as boundary of, of the cylinder, then it's positive, so this would be one, plus, and I have here the rotation number of, of the, of associated to any map of S1 to S1. Um, so in this case, uh, if this was, um, if this also ends in the middle of this point, this would be one, one over six. Um, okay. So now, um, if, if, if it were in the other direction, it would be negative. So given uh, by our choices of, of, of definition of a theta graph, we have that a theta graph produces positive rotation, rotation numbers. I'm sorry, is, is there a claim that that map is surjective somewhere? Which which map? That map, the, the only map up there, that arrow, right? There, the, this this map, surjective, yes. yes. Okay. And but it's not injected, right? Uh, no. So I, I don't understand the notation. Then it looks like you start with the thing on the right, and then you put a star on it. No, no, no. I start. No, 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 no. I start with. Uh, okay, I start with uh, with gamma. Uh, yeah. And gamma produces mapping glass here. Okay. It looks like it only depends on the class of gamma when you no, 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 no
What, what, what makes you think, what, what, what did I say that made you think that? Well, because if I had something that equaled that thing on the right, then the notation for it on the left, would, you would have two equal things with stars on them. So I would think they were the same. Okay. But <laughs> no, so you start with a gamma. Well, okay. And yeah. that, that produces a mapping class in this mapping class group. I'm about the notation. I think it's misleading. <laughs> and, and, I understand. I and the image of that thing, it's a periodic mapping. It's a periodic well, mapping glass. How would it be thorough? Well, it doesn't <laughs> look like the thing on the right immediately gives you one thing on the left. Uh, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I know it's okay. That's uh, so. The, the thing is, you, you can think it of the following. Uh, well, no, I understand. I just, I, I just okay. find the notation. Okay. Okay. Yes. Misleading. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. So theorem. Yeah, I we am up here so that it is the identity on the boundary. Then, then V, so it's periodic. So the notation means that you are given an homeomorphism any, and you, the mapping class here is with the star. And so, if if given this homeomorphism, then phi is periodic and the rotation numbers of of phi star ci are all positive if and only if um, phi star equals to phi gamma star for some um, for some theta type graph gamma. Okay, so this is one of the first uh, theorems that we, we had on the, on the thesis. And it pretty much tells you that the theta -tac graphs model all they can model, because given a theta -tac graph, it certainly models one, of, one mapping class here that is periodic here, but the other part is not obvious. Um, but since we are dealing with safer manifolds today, we don't, we don't, look at this mapping class group, rather at this one. This would be more useful to study singularity theory or the theory of open books, may maybe, but we're looking at this mapping class group here. So, it's a corollary. We just have that, um, that map there that leaves its boundary component invariant, not, not fix, uh, then phi it's really if and only if phi equals phi gamma for some uh, graph gamma. Um, but we still have a problem because uh, originally we, we want to, our, our goal is to model every, every horizontal surface, uh, the, the, every cipher manifold and horizontal surface embedded in a cipher manifold by given um, uh, surface and uh, automorphism of the surface. And there are automorphisms that, cert periodic automorphisms that certainly exchange boundary components. So we have to extend our notion of, of data type graphs. So uh, now I'm going to define to you what is a relative theta graph. So we do the following. Uh, I would say, oh, I will write here. So let gamma and A be a pair for my gamma, it's a metric room graph. And A, it's a subset of gamma that satisfies that A equals a union of A sub J, where it's a J is a circle, and there exist. Um, so, if we denote the thickening of gamma by sigma, so it comes with a retraction with R of sigma one equal gamma, um, satisfies that uh, there exist uh, C sub i. 
such that so this is a boundary component with the previous notation of the surface, such that R of C sub i one it's a sub j. So let's let's see on the on the example. Suppose that we are given different ribbon graph. I'm gonna modify this this graph. Um, Uh, now, so now we would have also these boundary components. So we suppose that we have been given a, a real graph, and this is the thickening of the real graph. And these are subject to be part of A. So I'm going to use yeah, this and this. Because there exists, there are circles, and there exists boundary component here, another here, that retracts to the image by the retraction is, is that part. So when this happens, uh, we consider the relative thickening of, of, of the relative graph to be this surface. So the, the relative thickening, actually, we, we, we remove those, those cylinders and the relative thickening actually contains the boundary component. So now this is also a, um, it's a the graph is also a retract of the surface, it's just not Containing an interior, it contains some, some of the boundary components, and this boundary component retracts to the whole graph. So the, the picture here would be this. And if I if I modify the original metric and I say that now each of these is one minus two epsilon length, and each of these size is 2 epsilon, um, then certainly any point here will satisfy the theta -th property because it has to go along the same amount of, of length. And we ask the following thing, I'm going to write it down, but for a point in the boundary, uh, the original, we don't need this, but the original definition was that we took the, um, we took the following safe walk. We took the safe walk that it's, um, it's the opposite, it, it, does, it, it starts in the opposite direction as the, as the origin indicated by the, by the orientation of this boundary as, as the boundary of the surface. So it would be this direction, so that when it reaches the next vertex, it goes out of, the, of that boundary component. And we ask, we call that, that boundary component by, by that boundary safe walk, that safe walk, we call it boundary safe walk, and we denote it by B sub P, and we ask, at its endpoint, it's also in A, maybe another component. So, uh, an, uh, in an, an analogous way, this defines a, a mapping class on the on on this other surface with boundary, and this mapping class actually exchanges those two boundary components. So, if you look at the at the hexagon here. The periodic mapping class is given by uh, by rotating the hexagon one over six, and and it was as it was before, but in this time it exchanged these two boundary components. So it is also true the following thing: the theorem. You start by a map here that that leaves at least one boundary component invariant, then then phi it's periodic. If and only if um, phi equals the mapping class given by by some relative to that map to that to that graph. So um, uh, okay. So, 
but there still happens. We still haven't covered all the all the cases because the, there exists automorphisms on surface that exchange every boundary component of the surface. So, an attempt of 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 modeling that, but modeling that 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 situation would be the to to try to, to look for invariant circles of, of the automorphism, for example. We could look for invariant circles and try to, to cut along the, the invariant circle. And then we would get a new surface that has two boundary components invariant and model that by one of these uh, relative data type graphs or, or, or original pure data type graphs. And, but it happens that, that the following thing is true. There was a theorem by Geiges in 2000. Um, so, yeah. check a little bit. So, Geiges and Kagi has a 2000. Say that um, there are well, forty-three values of g <laughs> less than ten thousand, such that um, every orientation preserving uh, every orientation preserving periodic automorphism has an invariant circle. So for the rest, it doesn't happen. So the only for forty-three values g um, every Orientation preserving um, automorphism of f of g. f of g is the closed surface of genus g. Um, has an invariant circle. Um, so, so given this situation, we develop a new notion of data type graph, which we call general data type graph, uh, which models every possible situation. I'm going to be going to show you what what it, what it is. So it consists of the following information. Uh, it's. A, is it, I'm sorry. This yeah. may have been asked when I was exactly forty three. There are exactly 43 values for G okay. less than 10,000, okay. such that the closed surface of genus G uh, satisfies that every periodic, every... Well, I just ask, because technically that just means there are at least 43. So, okay. No, there are exactly 30, 43 values. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. That paper is, is kind of nice. They develop some techniques and then they, they put a computer to work to... <laughs> We, hence your claim that this really is combinatorial. Yeah. <laughs> so let gamma be a metric ruin graph. Now we allow vertices of valency one, but those are be special. So let's call those uh, the boundary of, of gamma as a topological space because those that's what they are. And let sigma a yeah, permutation of Sn, where n is um, the number of points here. So, well, since we all know what a theta tech graph is now, I'm going to show you what, does, what this does with an example. So, imagine that we want to model the following situation. Um, that this this is a torus with three holes in it, and and we consider the the rotation by one third, so it gets exchanged periodically these three boundary components. Of course, there is no way we can attempt to 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 model this with the previous um, definitions of theta type graphs, but we do the following. Um, consider the following example.
So yeah, this. So uh. we <laughs> So now um, I give uh, the, this permutation, so the permutation of three points. So I just say that uh, I de define it by this. And now uh, our general safe walks are uh, you start at the interior of any point, and, and if you reach one of these points, you just follow in the next point indicated by the, by the permutation. So uh, these, these can be. You can ask that this has a fixed uh, length for uh, arbitrarily small for the whole graph. So, for example, in this situation, um, you say that uh, this is epsilon, and and these each of the other edges are is one six. Uh, minus epsilon over three. This satisfies the general theta -the property, which we would be to ask that the same that any any two points and any two general safe walks that are starting at point at, and at the same point. Um, this satisfies the that property and it defines precisely uh, the mapping class uh, of this periodic automorphism. So uh, with this definition, we are able to, and, and, and it is also true that given any periodic automorphism of, of, of a surface, if it doesn't leave any boundary component invariant, that it is, uh, we can model it by one of these uh, general data type graphs. Um, so, um, yeah, so part of our, our work has been to produce an algorithm that takes um, takes translates from ciphered manifold as horizontal surface to to a That graph and the other way around. Um, so, well, this is uh, what I wanted to tell you today. This is a uh, part of a larger work, not only restrict to safer manifolds, but this was the talk for today. So, well, thank you. <laughs> are there are there questions? Or comments? I, I have a question, the one you told me I should ask later. But oh, please. right. Wait, 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 maybe somebody else has a question. Okay. My questions are supposed to come last. Are there other questions? All right. Yeah. You know, this is combinatorial. You said computer checked yeah. these things. So it must be really combinatorial. And yet, Let me, you pick uh, a metric. Yeah. You take smooth paths or so, piecewise smooth paths. Yeah. It doesn't seem combinatorial. It doesn't seem combinatorial, right? Okay. So let me Okay. Mm. So real graph. First of all. Real graph can be encoded in two permutations. So you can give, for example, if I gave you this, let me. Yeah, I believe that. that you can yeah, yeah. Okay. so uh, two, three, and um, all. I don't remember which one we can. Right. Yeah, so there are two permutations that can recover where a real graph is. And okay. yeah, that. And also, yes, and also in all these theorems that uh, I told you about today, we can get the metric to be actually, to be each, each, instead, of, instead of being a positive real number, it can be a rational positive number, okay? 
and and so that it's more combinatorial than a real number and and it is also a theorem that it if the tet tet property is satisfied for for a point inside an edge it is satisfied for all the points in that edge, in that edge so once we have the the permutations so actually these permutations um, ah, let, let me let me tell you or actually the computer does is the following let me take uh, an example it's that same example so um, these are the permutations so sigma zero b one two three four five six and sigma one would be um, so one four two five and three six and suppose that the metric that I give to this is uh, so I'm going to say that each of so this 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 is a particular projection in the plane of that original graph and and so this here it's more comfortable to use two dimensional uh, two vertices of valency two but we can also delete them um, and suppose that I take my metric would be vector of one half so one half six times so I understand how you give this data to so computer. yes so, so now so yes so now now if I get to so for each each of these uh, uh, two cycles represents one vertex of valency two which is happens to be in the middle of an edge you can always get that that is in the yeah. middle of an edge okay. so now you start at this point and you are going to try to check the theta the property for that point so you have uh, two directions so you go in the direction indicated by the dark five for example so you go in the direction indicated by the dark five and you subtract from one one half then you go here and what you do you apply this permutation to five uh, you apply uh, you, you input like here five and it gives you six it tells you that uh, so I that, that is uh, that is wrong how I did this it was yeah or the other permutation so actually it's composing permutations and subtracting from one a rational a positive rational number and the computer may find out that at some point the the the, um, the the length is negative in which case there is no way of 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 satisfying the that, that, that property but if it's zero then it holds that the point the end point and it does the the other way with the other thing and the reason you don't define things this way in the first place is because that seems more intuitive and everybody yes can picture going, yes exactly at least okay. me but uh okay. but this but these are theorems that no, uh, that tells you that those Definition are equivalent to this more commutatorial. Actually, actually now I have a program in Sage, but uh, maybe it's at some point is in is in actually in Sage, where you input this, and it tells you what, what, if it's a tetra graph or not. And if it is, it gives you the cipher invariance of the cipher manifold plus uh, uh, an element of the cohomology of the basis space of the cipher manifold, which classifies the horizontal surfaces of the cipher manifold. And also the other way around, which is a little bit harder to, to do. I mean, the, writing the details of this is a bit awful, but... <laughs> <laughs> but, well, yeah. Thank you. Are there, are there other questions or comments? All right, well then let's thank, thank Pablo again.